First thing in prayer, one of the biggest mistakes that we make when we pray, we are so general in our prayers. And I believe that God wants us to be specific in asking him for something. Being specific, what it does, it adds value to your prayer. Uh, you, you should have a definite object, a definite thing, a, a, a definite person that you're praying for. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it reads, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, whatever you're focusing on, whatever that need is, place that need before God. Call that name out. Call that thing out before God. Amen? When people come to the altar sometime for prayer, I'll ask them, well, what do you want to be prayed for? They say, well, I just want to be blessed. Well, that's not a specific thing. When you come to the altar for prayer, if you tell me you want to be blessed, be careful what you ask for because I just might tell you to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I don't think you want to hear that. Uh, so always have something specific in mind. So many times we pray and we'll tell God, uh, bless, save the man on the street corner, heal the sick everywhere. That's a general prayer. That prayer is really not targeting anyone specifically. If you really want to be helpful into saving that person out on the street corner, first thing you need to do is go out on the street corner. Get that person's name and witness to them. Then you can go to your private place, get down on your knees, and call that person's name out in prayer. And then you can monitor that person. And one day you may pass the street corner up and see that person is no longer there. And when you inquire about them, you just may find out that they've turned their life around. Why? Because you were pacific. Your prayer had a target. And sometimes we even pray and say, God, heal your people everywhere. Now, do you really think, now I'm not trying to put nobody down, but do you really think that you have the faith for God to heal everybody everywhere? Come on, let's be real. Why don't you visit the hospital or find out who in your congregation or who in your family might be sick. So when you get down on your knees, you can be specific in prayer. You can put a name to that healing prayer. And then you can watch God heal that person that you're praying for. So what am I saying? I'm saying when you have a target, you can be more fervent. Yes, I want God to save uh, the, the, the young man on the street, but when I have a relationship with that man, when I know him personally, then I can be more fervent in my prayer. Why? Because I know his name, and I'm calling his name out before God. And what am I doing? I'm expecting God to change the life of that person whose name I call. So first thing, please, be specific. Stop praying general prayer. So many times we're worried about how our prayer sounds. Then we are concerned about the person or the thing that we're praying for. Amen. So number two, you got to pray in faith. I must have faith for what I am praying for. You must understand the words in your prayer, they do carry weight. But what carries the most weight in your prayer is your faith. I mean, think about it. When the woman with the issue of blood, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible lets us know that when she touched his garment, she was made whole. And Jesus asked the question, who touched me? And the woman said, well, I'm the one that touched you. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Yes, she did say within herself, if I could but just touch the hem of his garment. But when she touched his garment, her faith went into action. And it wasn't the words that she spoke that caused her to be healed. It was her faith that caused the word that she spoke to go into action and pull power from the hem of his garment. Even the centurion soldier, when he came to Jesus, he asked Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus said, okay, let's go to your house. He said, oh, no, you don't need to go to my house. I'm, I'm a man of authority. You are a man of authority. And I understand how authority works. 
I just need for you to speak the word only. And Jesus was like, wow. And when the centurion soldier got home, he found out that his servant was healed. And he asked a question, about what time did my servant get healed? And when they gave him the time, he realized it was the same time that Jesus had spoke the word. But what did Jesus say? Jesus didn't repeat what the man said. Jesus said, I have not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. So remember, when you're praying for somebody, I don't care how long you pray. I, I don't care what the need is. I don't care how desperate your prayer is. You must have faith. Your faith is what's going to cause the words that come out of your mouth to go into action. And what is faith? How do you get faith? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So to be honest, right now, you should have enough faith on the inside of you to face whatever comes your way. I mean, I already know God's a healer. I already know God is a deliverer. I already know he's a way maker. So I, really, I'm walking around with faith on the inside. Why? Because I've already heard the word. Faith don't come by trials. You know, when a trial comes, that's, that's the wrong time to, to try to muster up some faith. When, when you run out of money, you need to have some faith while you have some money. Uh, having faith in God to heal when you get sick, that's the wrong time to try to get it. When you hear God to heal them, something ought to roll over in your spirit while you are well, or while you have strength in your body, knowing that if I ever get sick, because I've heard the word of God and God's word say God is a healer, I'm just faith waiting for an opportunity to use it. I'm, I'm walking in faith waiting for a problem to show up. Why? Because I've heard the word and I, and I believe what I have heard. Therefore, when trouble comes, I'm not looking for faith. When I go down on my knees, I'm going on my knees in faith. I'm not going down on my knees looking for faith. When I pray, I believe. When, I head, when I'm headed to my secret place to pray and to petition God for certain things, I'm going to this place in faith. Why? Because I know God answers prayer. And that's why it's so important to stay in your word and read your word and roll it over in your mind and meditate on it. Because you never know what's going to hit you. You never know what you're going to face. You never know what's going to happen on that job. You never know what bad news your children are going to bring home. You never know what bad phone call you may get in the middle of the night. And you don't have time to muster up no faith. That's why when you hear the word, grab a hold to what God has said and deposit it down in your spirit. So when trouble comes, you can meet trouble with faith. And I'm going to tell you, every time trouble meets faith, faith will win every time. So the first thing you need is have a target for your prayer. The second thing you need after you have a target, you have to pray in faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing, and hearing the word of God. Number three, distractions. Lord have mercy. Aren't we the most distracted folks? And, and most of you all, you know what your biggest distraction is? What you're holding in your hand right now, that cell phone. Uh, social media, trials, troubles, heartaches and pains, all these distractions Find a way to keep us off our knees. Instead of us allowing trouble to take us to our knees, look like the more trouble we get into, the less we pray. But you have to fight off distractions. You know, the devil works on your mind. He tries to bog you down from the time you wake up in the morning. All day long, he wants you so mentally and physically and emotionally busy that you don't have time to pray. But look here, you have to fight. You have to kick the door of distraction down in your mind and say, look, I don't care what's going on. I don't care how bad it is right now. If, if you and your spouse is arguing, look, look, I have to stop. If things aren't going right on the job, if, you, if you've had a frustrated day, you just got out of traffic, well, don't get home and, and shut the door and don't speak to nobody. 
just walk in the house and say, hold on, y'all. I need a moment with God. Amen? Distractions. The devil does not want you to talk to God. He wants you to try to handle all of the cares of this life on your own. But look, you can't, you can't afford to do that. You cannot afford to try and handle the things that we have to face from a day to day uh, without talking to God and, and getting that assurance down in your spirit. Amen. Even I look at what we're facing now. Every morning we wake up, we don't know if the stock market is crashed. We don't know if we're going to have a job. And y'all remember when the savings and loans crashed back in the 80s, people who had all that money in the savings and loans, they ran to the savings and loans places and they couldn't get any money out. You remember Enron crash. People's life savings, millions of dollars, retirement. People were committing suicide because they went to bed rich and woke up broke. Lord, have mercy. What would you do? If you went to bed with a retirement, you was getting ready to retire in two years. You went to bed rich and woke up realizing that you're going to have to continue to work and you're already past 70 years old. Amen. So it's good to have a relationship with God through prayer. Why is that? So when hard times come and I've learned to fight through those distractions, fight through those trials, fight through problems in the home and on the job and in society, Fight through those financial struggles. Fight through whatever's going on in my body. When I learn how to fight through those distractions so I can get down on my knees and pray, then that's when I build myself up so when trouble comes, I'm already fortified in my spirit and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, right now we're really finding out who the strong saints are and who the weak saints are. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, what does it say about your strength? It says your strength is small. And what, what helps us keep our strength built up is constant communication with God. So you got to fight through the distraction. And then after that, you can't really have an effective prayer life without a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, just like a flower or a beautiful green leaf on an oak tree, I don't care how beautiful that flower is, I don't care how pretty and green that oak leaf is, if it wasn't for the roots or the vine of that tree, then that flower, that leaf, would have no beauty or no strength at all. So what am I trying to say? It doesn't matter. How eloquent your prayers is, doesn't matter how long you pray. If you are not connected with God, if you don't have a strong, deep relationship with God, then your prayer is going to be fruitless. Think about it. The people we know the most are the people we can trust. It would be hard for me to trust someone who I just met, walks up to me and say, Hey man, could you loan me $100? I'll pay you back tomorrow. I mean, what do we all say? Man... I don't know you. Well, the same way with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you don't have an intimate relationship to where you talk with him and you commune with him and you can feel his presence, then it's hard to really believe God is going to do what he said he's going to do if you don't have a relationship with him. So your prayer has to be rooted in a healthy and a continuous relationship and communion with God. What would this do? This will add a greater level of faith to your prayer. I mean, think about it. I'm walking and talking and feeling God's presence all day. Then all of a sudden something comes up. I'm not even fearful. Fear or doubt doesn't even come to my mind. Why? Because I've been hanging out with God all day. Can you imagine anybody better to hang out with than God through prayer and through communion to build up your faith? I remember when I was a young boy, uh, I was the youngest, well I was the youngest, I'm still the youngest of four, and the, my three brothers older than me, they were some pretty uh, rowdy, physical fighting guys, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't a fighter, I, just, I was just a little old me. But in the neighborhood, they, they had a real reputation of being tough. Now when I was ever by myself, I was very timid, you know, you could probably get a couple of licks in and I would 
probably wouldn't even hit you back because I was, I was a little afraid. I was a little afraid sometimes because I just wasn't bought up like that. But it was amazing. Whenever I walked through the neighborhood with my brothers, it seemed as though I had a boldness that I didn't have when I was by myself. Whenever I was with them, I felt as though I could defeat anybody in the neighborhood. Well, it's the same way with God. When you're in constant communion and fellowship with God, it gives you a boldness through prayer that whatever you face through prayer, you can conquer anything. So how can you believe a God that you don't know? But when you know God, how can you doubt it? The old folks used to say he's a nail in a sure place. You can hang your hat on him. You can cast all of your cares on him through prayer because he cared for you. And the next thing I want to talk about is don't give up in prayer. Look, sometimes we pray and God is, don't answer or it seems like heaven is brass. Let me tell you something. When you pray, God hears you. You don't have to feel that run up down your spine. You don't have to cry. You, you better believe when you open your mouth and pray, God hears what you say. The Bible says this is a confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, then what? We know that he heareth us. you got to believe that when you pray according to God's will, God hears what you say. And then he said his word will not return unto him void. That's why it's so important to know his word. Because if I send God his word, I have an assurance down in my spirit that whatever I send to him, if it's his word, it will not return return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he pleased. But sometimes when God doesn't move, when we think God should move, then we kind of stop praying and we just kind of move on to the next thing. But the Bible lets us know that once you pray, keep on praying. You know, uh, uh, once you knock at the door and, and, and somebody don't knock, keep on knocking. You ever went to somebody's house and you knew they was in there? You may have been dropping something off, or you were there to pick them up, and you knock, and they didn't answer. You just didn't walk away unless you didn't want to pick them up in the first place. But you knock, and if they didn't come to the door, you knock again. Why do you keep on knocking? Because you know somebody's in there. Why do I keep on praying? Because I know God hears me, and I know he's going to answer. And if I keep knocking, if I keep believing, if I keep trusting, God will come through. So don't give up on your prayer. The Bible says he spake a parable to this end. The verse that we use in our opening. Men ought to always pray and not faint and not give up hope. Sometimes we just get tired of praying for that son or that daughter, that husband, that wife. We get tired of praying for a better job. Uh, uh, we get tired of praying uh, for our church or for our community. We just give up. And how many times do we give up and the prayer was just one, your answer was just one more prayer away. I remember a story uh, by Edgar Allan Poe, and I can't go through the whole story, but the person had three wishes, and they were down to their third wish. And because they were afraid, they was afraid of what was on the other side of that door, their answer was on the other side of that door. But they, their last wish caused their answer to disappear. And just like in prayer, sometimes our prayer is delayed by the enemy. Not denied, but delayed. And your prayer, every time you fall on your knees, that answer is getting closer and closer and closer. And the day you give up, that may be the day that your prayer was getting ready to walk through the door. The morning you decided to no longer pray, that could have been the day that God was getting ready to answer your prayer. So that's why prayer is so important. Just like the woman who, who wanted to be avenged of her adversary. She just kept going and kept going and kept going to the unjust man. Now if an unjust man will answer the repetitive prayers of a woman, how much more will God answer the repetitive prayers of a, his children? So saints, it is praying time. And tell you the best time to pray is when you don't feel like it. I have written down here, when you don't feel like praying, that's when prayer is most needed. Well, who is it that you think don't want you to pray? The trials of this life and the adversary of your soul, the devil. He doesn't want you to pray. 
He wants you to get angry and not want to pray. He wants you tired and not want to pray. But when you feel like that, that's the time you should pray the most. And I was always told, when you can't pray like you want to, just pray like you can. You know, if you can't find that place, pray where you are. If you don't feel like using a bunch of words, just fall down and say, just Lord, I need you. And, and God knows how to interpret the words that come out of our mouth. I, I remember someone telling me about a boy didn't know what to pray, so he just called off the ABCs from A to Z. He said, Lord, you know what I'm trying to say. Just put it all together for me. Sometimes God can interpret your teardrops. You get down on your knees and you just don't know what to say. You cry out. I believe that's what David said, Lord, hide my tears in a bottle. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God that wants to answer your prayer. And I know many of you all out there may have given up on certain things. I'm here to tell you, put those things back on the table. Put your hopes and put your dreams and put the desires of your heart back on the table. Ask God to forgive you uh, for not hanging in there with prayer and not staying faithful in prayer and trusting him. Uh, sometimes we just give up on a better life. But God said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. And we know the Bible said the thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So I want to encourage everyone out there to please stay faithful in prayer. It's okay to pray the same thing over and over. But just remember, have a target. No more general prayers. Have a target for your prayer so you can be fervent and so you can expect to see a return on your prayer. You'll know what to look for. When you pray in general, you don't know what to look for. But when I pray a specific prayer, I know what to look for. When I pray for the St. Terry Williams Temple, certain people come up before me and I call off their names. I just don't say, Lord, bless all the saints at Williams Temple. There's some people in here that I target with prayer. And I don't target to kill them. I, I target God to bless them and, and heal them and, and, and make provisions in their life. And I put their names on those prayers. Why? So I can watch God change that person's life. So I want to encourage you all to continue stand before God, continue praying, and watch God answer the petitions that you offer up to him in faith. And while I'm still here, there may be someone out there that's watching that's not saved. And what I mean by that, you've never accepted Christ into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. And it's one thing I know in times like these, we need a Savior. Times like these, we need a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. In times like these, we need someone that could hold our mind and our spirit together while we go through these difficult times. So if you're not saved, I just want to quickly lead you through what we call the sinner's prayer. And if you repeat after me, and if you believe these words, then by faith, God will come into your life and make you a new creature. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that God raise you from the dead. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you now for coming into my life and I receive you as Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now what you have to do, if you believe that in your heart, then go and tell somebody and let them know what God has done for you. I want to thank everyone for visiting. Amen. Uh, our Wednesday evening Bible study. You know, we don't want to go a whole hour because we know y'all retention span is short. Some of y'all have already set the phone down and walked away. But we want to make sure that every Wednesday until this little crisis is over, that we come to you and give you the word of God. And we'll be back on uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock sharp. So between 11, 1140, you got to get in. We're going to have praise and worship. And we're going to have the word of God and the words of encouragement. Now, some people are kind of skeptical about a pastor's mentioning tithes and offering uh, during this time. However, I want all those that are listening, people are calling the church, wanting to know 
how they can continue to pay their tithes and their offering. We're, we're not uh, uh, bamming on folks' doors and calling them on the phone and say, hey, we need your money. People are calling the church. Amen. Wanted to know, Pastor, I know the blessing that it is in giving. So we want to make sure on every broadcast that the people that want to give and the people that are able to give, that they know how to do it. You can go to our website at the, living, at the Williams Temple Kojic.com and you can click on Give. And on there, it has Givelify and PayPal. Also, during the broadcast, you can call up to the church or you can come by the church and you can pay over the phone or you can pay in person. And then Monday through Friday as well from 9 to 3, you can bring your offering to the church. We're not being insensitive. We know there's a financial bind on a lot of people. You know what I want you to do? I want you to pray and do what's right for you and your family. I mean, I understand the, the principle of sowing and giving. So that's why I'm not worried about this time. I'm not worried because I have. I'm not worried because I have sown. And I know God is going to supply my needs. So we want to encourage you all to do the same thing. So at this time, thank you all for, for joining us. I'll see you again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, God bless you and go in peace. Remember to wash your hands, keep a safe distance, and be blessed. God bless you.